The Moth in the Iron Lung A Biography of Polio It was spring, 1869. Like many other cities around the country, Boston, Massachusetts, was still recovering from the devastation of the Civil War. Though the conflict had ended four years earlier, a huge musical celebration called the National Peace Jubilee would soon take place in a newly built coliseum covering over four and a half acres, the largest structure in all 37 states of the country. Over 50,000 men, women, and children would fill the stands each day, not only to benefit the widows and orphans of the war, but to, quote, commemorate the restoration of peace throughout the land, end quote. Red, white, and blue bunting hung throughout the massive wooden structure. A huge bass drum, eight feet in diameter, featured hand-painted lettering that proclaimed, Let us have peace. Other smaller drums displayed the less inspirational message of Gilmore, the name of the event's conductor and organizer, Patrick Gilmore, better known for his rousing Civil War tune, When Johnny Comes Marching Home. After an opening prayer and a 45-minute address on restoration and peace, the pipe organ, powered by a gas engine outside, unleashed a din of air and sound into the room as the familiar refrains of A Mighty Fortress is Our God brought everyone to their feet. Men stood and clapped, women shook their handkerchiefs in the air, and children begged their parents for more. It was the grandest musical experience the world had ever seen. Patrick Gilmore's jubilee had perfectly encapsulated the joy and elation everyone felt as the country emerged from four years of brutal fighting still united. The war was officially over, and all of Boston and the other great cities across the land were eager to embrace the seemingly infinite promise of a unified country. Although the nation would not sacrifice so many in military conflict for many years, a new menace was emerging just six miles away from Gilmore's Grand Coliseum, a scourge that would claim the lives or health of millions around the world for the next century. While the Civil War had targeted mostly young men with death, this threat was different. It would often mark children as its prey, and though many would die, those that didn't were frequently left lame or crippled for the rest of their lives. Just north of the National Peace Jubilee, across Boston's Charles and Mystic Rivers, a man was fumbling through the grass and bushes that lined the side of his small two-story house. Neighbors walked by and remarked at his frantic search as he clawed through blades of grass on his hands and knees. It was a pleasant spring day, but the wind had picked up, frustrating his efforts. Clearly distraught, he went back to the window from where his search had begun. Just a few minutes earlier, he had placed a mass of moth eggs on the kitchen sill when a gust of wind lifted them up in the air and out into the yard. He burst through the front door and leapt off the porch in an attempt to collect them before the mass broke apart, littering the yard with hundreds of tiny eggs. It was too late. He groped through foliage, looking for signs of the furry brown sack, but it was gone. The eggs contained inside had probably separated and been carried up into the wind. They could have landed anywhere in his yard, or his neighbors. He had lost other eggs, caterpillars and moths before, but they were mostly native species, perfectly suited for the local environment due to thousands of years of natural selection. These were not. He knew enough about moths and their voracious appetite to be severely distressed. The fact that these were an invasive species of moth, brought to the United States from Europe, made it all the more troubling. He brushed the dirt and grass from his knees, returned inside, and sat down at the kitchen table. He checked his sleeves and noticed a single egg, one of probably five hundred nestled within the folds of his cuffs. It was time to move, he thought, closer to the city. He didn't need acres of forest in which to run his experiments any longer. A few summers later, a new family had moved into his house, and several curious creatures appeared on the clabbered siding. To the children playing outside, they would have appeared to be just another caterpillar, but with their hairy bodies and twin sets of blue and red dots along their back, they were anything but. They were, in fact, Lymantria dispar dispar, the larval form of the gypsy moth, an insect that had been causing devastation in Europe for years. The man who had let them escape knew the ruin they might cause to the surrounding area if they weren't destroyed. However, neither he or the new family living at 27 Myrtle Street could have imagined the furry caterpillar crawling along the side of their house would inadvertently set the stage for epidemics of the most famous disease in modern history, polio.